Pat Forty from Yahoo Sports. Uh, wanted to have Pat on for a couple of reasons. New college hoop rules. And uh, he thinks that uh, the sportsman of the year for Sports Illustrated should be American Pharaoh and maybe sweep the ESPYs. Pat, how about this? We have American Pharaoh come out at the ESPYs as a presenter. <laughs> I love it, you know. Put the, uh, put the envelope in his mouth. Yes. They can have Victor ride him out onto the stage. Yes, that would be you great. Know? Yeah. Now, why do you yes. think that this horse – how do we know American Pharaoh is a good sportsman? Well – has he ever said anything stupid to the media? <laughs> Absolutely not. He hasn't, has he ever gone after a talk radio host calling him Basketball Benny and saying how bad he was at his planet? <laughs> would never do that sort of thing. But never American Pharaoh American Pharaoh is a difficult interview. <laughs> he is a, he's a strong silent type. And he lets his actions speak for him. Uh, have you ever had that kind of run in with Calipari that I had? Yeah, um, yes. I, I certainly have. Did he say um, that he, you suck at what you do, writing? Uh, no, I, I think he made it fairly clear, but not quite in, in those <laughs> words. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> we, he and I don't have a great relationship, so I, I got a bit of a kick out of that. I actually have a good relationship with him. It's mm-hmm. just it's one of those odd relationships where, you know, unless you know the history, then you're thinking, gosh, this guy hates him or he hates that guy. Made for good radio. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Sure. Maybe. Sure. All right. Eventually, you'll learn something about the sport. All right. Make your case for American Pharaoh as Sportsman of the Year. Well, accomplished something that I, I thought was impossible in uh, in modern sports. Didn't think that the, the current thoroughbred, the way he's bred and trained, could do it. Could win those three races in five weeks, three different tracks, three different distances. Uh, did it smashingly, did it impressively. He's undefeated in 2015. The only ace with LeBron without Kyrie Irving and Kevin Love leads Cleveland to its first championship Ooh. since, you know, 54. That'll be tough to beat, 64, whatever it is. Uh, but until he does it, I'd say American Fair is the leader in the clubhouse. Just uh, amazed at what he did and the reaction that transpired at Belmont. That was a football, it was an SEC football roar at the <laughs> Belmont. I was just amazed at the sound. Never heard a sound like that at a racetrack before. Why is it that we always have to look big picture with everything, that we can't just enjoy the moment? As soon as American Pharaoh crossed the finish line, it was American Pharaoh is no secretariat, and American Pharaoh is not going to save horse racing. Yeah, I agree, and I hate that. I, let's enjoy the moment. It was an amazing moment, and that's... I, I, there's plenty of time for the other stuff. And no, he's no secretary. Nobody ever will be. I mean, what secretary did is, is impossible. But that doesn't mean he's not one of the best horses anybody who is alive has ever seen. I mean, to win the Triple Crown, only 11 other horses have done it. That stamps you as a truly legendary horse. And no, horse racing is never going to be what it was. It's not the 50s anymore. You're not going to have... Everybody in their fedoras and their stogies going out to the track on a Wednesday and, and betting all the races. It's a different time, a different era, but it was a great moment for a downtrodden sport. He's Pat Forty from Yahoo Sports. He covers college football and college basketball. Last month you wrote, college basketball has been trending towards unwatchable for several years. Why are we getting this change now? That's be that's why uh, people are just are, are, are watching in the, the numbers that they used to watch. People are turned off by the game. It's been slow. It's ugly. It's unskilled. It's way too physical, and the advantages have gone way too much to the defense. And so you know they're going to try to clean it up. And I applaud them. I think it had to be done. Uh, they they weren't just satisfied with a little change here, a little change there. This is not a nip and tuck. This is a big set of changes that the college basketball has passed here. And if the officials Call it the way it should be called, and the coaches don't lose their minds when they call it the way it should be called. We're going to have a lot freer, cleaner game. Well, okay, we we uh, have the short cl- uh, shot clock changed, which I like, but I also have a problem with all of the timeouts here. The second half timeouts make it unwatchable. The the final ten minutes, five minutes, that's what makes it unwatchable. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I mean, the end of close games become a, a bore. And, you know, you get these great dramatic endings that are interrupted by timeout, 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 replay review, foul out, take 45 seconds to replace the guy, you know, and it just it can take two minutes, can take 20 minutes, and that's where you kill the, the buzz at the end of a game. And they, they, they're going to reduce the timeouts by one, which is good. 
and uh, try to uh, kind of fold in media timeouts with regular timeouts a little bit better. So I think they're getting better in that area. And then the officials just got to speed up play. You know, when a guy fouls out, get the subs in and out. And when people go to the foul line, forget the huddles, line up, shoot the free throws, you know, those sort of things, and it'll, it'll be a little bit better. College football playoffs, at what point do we, uh, you know, open up the envelope and uh, change from four to eight? Not anytime soon, I don't think. No, I know it's uh, I mean, contractual it's, there, Pat, but everything, yeah. I mean, everything's negotiable here. I just get the feeling that everybody realized finally how much money could be made and how much excitement uh, that, you know, hey, we, we got to just double it. We'll double the pleasure, double the money. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I think everybody got paid that feeling instantly. The last year, four was great. Eight would be better. Um, but I, there's, there's still a lot of resistance to it at the presidential level, at the commissioner level, uh, and, you know, even at the coaching level. I mean, one of the things Urban Meyer and Mark Helfrich both said last year is, that, man, if we had to play another round of games, yeah. we'd be we'd be in trouble because of the physical demand on the players and the time demand. And uh, you get to a 15, 16-game season, and all of a sudden it's an NFL length for guys that are supposed to be polite students and everything, and it's, it's probably too much. Yeah, but why don't we cut down on the regular season? I agree. That, that yes, but there's 128 athletic directors that say, no, don't cut down on the regular season. We need those home <laughs> games. <laughs> well, I, I, I think if they, they said to the big conferences, this is, these are our rules. Now, the other, other schools, if they want to play more games, they can if they need to have more revenue. But these big-time schools who are going to be going to these bowl games and sharing the bowl money, I think you could still do that where everybody has a universal number here, and maybe we cut out conference championship games here. How about that? I, I would love that. I've been saying that for years. Conference championship games are, are as, do as much detriment as good often to, to leagues when the best team gets beaten. Uh, and uh, they're just simply they're pure money grab. I, I am a, I've always been against conference championship games, so that would be the easiest way to uh, – to cut that down on the, on the regular season load on these guys. But uh, the, the conference is like making that money on them, that's for sure. You would have to, what you're, you're right, you would have to show them a business plan where the money would be made up on the back end from the playoff. Has the Longhorn Network been a success? Uh, I think monetarily it's, it's, it's helped Texas, but I don't know, you know whether it's been a success from a consumer standpoint, whether the school has actively benefited from it. I mean, none of their sports programs are doing very well other than the men's swim team, which won the national championship. But mostly, you know, Texas sports aren't where they were before the Longhorn Network. So I don't think it's been some something that's transformed them into a more competitive school. Good to visit with you, Pat. Thanks for joining us, and good luck uh, campaigning for American Pharoah. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. Have All right, one. that's Pat Forty from Yahoo Sports. 